What up, nerds? My name is Leslie. Welcome or welcome back to The Nerdy Narrative. On this channel, I like to talk about all sorts of bookish related things and the huge variety of genres that I read in. Science fiction, fantasy, classics, literary fiction, horror, manga, comics. And beginning with this month, I'm going to add an air of mystery to the genre selection. So on today's episode of fun, I'm going to share with you my July 2021 TBR. Let's start with what I plan to read as part of the Indie Accords Readathon. The Indie Accords Readathon is an independent, self-published, focused readathon that is hosted by Lana from the channel Lore and Lullabies. I will have her channel linked below along with the announcement videos for the Indie Accords readathon. And as the captain of team horror, mystery, and thriller, the first book that is up on the July TBR is our team group read, which is The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark. This is the first book in this trilogy and it is amazing. I'm really looking forward to rereading it because I want to see if it holds up. It is my current favorite haunted house story and I want to know what happens when you know how it's going to end. I want to know, am I going to have the same level of fear and just creepy vibes as I did the first time? Am I going to be just as scared to walk around my dark and shadowed house as I was the first time I read this? Hmm, can't wait to find out. Next, I have a little collection of tales called Anoka by Shane Hawk. This was so kindly gifted to me by my friend Evie from the channel She Was Only Evie. But this collection, I'm really excited to read because Anoka is the name of a town in Minnesota, which has been dubbed the Halloween capital of the world since 1937. You know, that just, screams challenge as far as spooky tales. I don't know anything about it other than that. I have seen a lot of really positive reviews for it. I love that he blurbed his grandmother on the back of this book. Please find another hobby. This is too horrible for words. How can you imagine someone enjoying this? This readathon just provided me the perfect opportunity to go through my shelves and pull off Indian self-pub books that I've been picking up and just haven't gotten to yet. So I am really excited about this one. Next is another collection of dark tales. This one is called Nocturne by H.B. Diaz. This was sent to me by my friend Steve from Steve Talks About Books and Stuff. And I am very excited to read this. Steve was talking about it on his channel and it just really sounded like something that was going to be up my alley. I just don't see how I'm not going to enjoy this. From the gothic to the gory, this ghostly collection will keep you awake long into the witching hours of the night. You know, there's going to probably be a lot of sleepless nights for me in July. The next one is a highly anticipated release for me. That is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. I think I have read just about everything Eric LaRocca has out and there has not been one thing I did not like. So I have very, very high expectations for this one. Many of my reviewer friends have said that this one here is their favorite piece by him yet. This was his best piece of written work yet. I am excited to find that out for myself. I mean, this cover is just stellar. The back says, a whirlpool of darkness churns at the heart of a macabre ballet between two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s. A darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to their most horrific desires. So I know that I am team horror, mystery, and thriller, but I have a sci-fi indie published book that was on the docket to read and review already for this month. I already told the author, Ryan Hyatt, that I had it slated for this month and I'm still going to take care of reading it and reviewing it. While I am team captain of the readathon, I'm not actually competing for any of the prizes or giveaways. I'm just participating. So I'm going to sneak this one in and call it a win. But this one is called The Psychic Memoirs. I've been really excited to read it ever since he sent it to me. A mind warping journey through an all too plausible near future America where socio-political revolution and advanced technology 
represent the promise and peril of human evolution. That kind of stuff scares the stuff out of me. But it scares me in a thrilling and addictive way, if that makes sense. Not only will I be reading Ryan's book this month, but his daughter published a book that I'm going to read this month. That is The Last Shimmer by Sage Hyatt. This one was perfect timing when Ryan sent it to me because it is about middle grade characters and that's going to fit a prompt that I have for the India Accord Readathon, which is read a book about a middle grade character. I don't read much middle grade and I was kind of at a loss as to where to start to find something indie published for that. When he sent this to me, I was so grateful, but I'm very thrilled to read his daughter's first published work. So I derailed for a quick sci-fi book. Let me get back on the tracks to my team, which is mystery. I'm going to read my first mystery. I think this is my first mystery, cozy mystery I've read since I started the channel. I'm pretty positive it is, but this is written by my friend Bart J. Gilbertson and is Deathbed and Breakfast, which is a cozy mystery where I believe two bed and breakfast owners investigating one of their customers for some reason or other. And you never know, this one might get me back into reading mystery. I used to read a ton of mystery. That was really where I got my start as a kid. Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, although I did go through a phase of Fear Street as a kid too that I loved. So we'll see if I get back in touch with my mystery loving roots and start incorporating mysteries back into the old TBR each month. Next, I will be reading Tome by Ross Jeffrey. Tome is actually the prequel to Juniper, which I read by him last year. Juniper was fantastic. I've heard Tome is even better. I'm very, very excited to read it. One of the elements I was most interested in in Juniper was the prison. It seemed really evil. It just seemed to have its own malevolent force surrounding it, and I wanted to know more. And I was so happy to find out that that is exactly what Tome was featuring, was that prison. So I am very excited to read this one. I have a feeling I'm going to binge it. The next few I'll be reading on my trusty Kindle, and the first one is The Goners by L. Stevenson. I was unable to find a book description of The Goners on Goodreads, but the picture of the front cover has a blurb that says it's the first in the Baltimore Butcher series, which totally made my eyes light up in delight because that just sounds like it's gonna be good. Baltimore Butcher, it just has that really good serial killer ring to it, doesn't it? Next on the list is Vile Artistry by June Chevalier. This one I am super interested in. It has a really gothic, fantasy vibe to it and you know I love fantasy. I absolutely love fantasy. That's probably my most favorite genre but I really love when fantasy combines other elements or vice versa. Horror combines fantasy elements. I love when there's a mixture of the two and this one talks about a young lady in her tribe who's able to do something supernatural. It sounds like there are events that's going to force her to choose between redeeming herself with her tribe or saving her family. Like it sounds like there's going to be an emotional investment. It sounds like it's going to be very character driven, which I love. So this is one that's been on my list for a very long time. I'm excited to get to it. And then over on Audible, I picked up Wallflower by Chad Lutsky. This one is described as a coming of age tale about addiction. This one I've heard reviewed by Nikki over on her channel, Dark Between Pages, and that immediately put it on my radar. I will find that video where she talks about it and link it down below. But the way she described it, I immediately had to add it to my list. So I have that one on Audible that I'm gonna be knocking out this month for the readathon. Next on the trusty Kindle will be The Diner by J.C. Robinson. I heard about this one when I was part of a live stream where we were talking with Joshua Marcella, who wrote several and scratches. There was no description on Goodreads, but from what I remember, it was something to do about a waitress in a diner. I think she kills people. There was something more to the premise that had me 
getting the book on my Kindle while I was in the middle of the live stream. I can't remember what it was, but I'm sure I'll remember as soon as I start reading it and I'll be happy to share that with you guys. And then my next two indie books for the Indie Accords Readathon are fantasy. And I know that fantasy is not my team, but again, I'm not competing for any of the prizes or the giveaways. One of those two is Stones of Light by Zach Argyle. It's his second book in the Threadlight series. I was super lucky and won an Audible giveaway for the first book, um, which I also ended up getting the ebook on my Kindle because it was part of Kindle Unlimited and I went ahead and snatched book two. But Zach told me that the audiobook for the second book will hopefully be ready the last week of July, maybe first part of August. And he got Adam Gold to do the second audiobook. I have to wait for that. So I might bump this one until August if the audiobook isn't available. But just in case I'm mentioning it, because if that becomes available, I am 100% getting that one done this month. Uh, and then my other fantasy is a YA fantasy called Weavers by my friend John Walker. This one sounds a bit like a post-apocalyptic world and people have the ability to manipulate the elements. Those people that could control the elements with their humanity, their human energy, are called weavers, which is obviously where the book gets its title. And I believe we are following a group of high schoolers who are weavers. It just sounded fun. It sounded really good. My copy should be here any day now. I got one look at the cover and I had to have it. So I had a couple of fantasy books, which is on the other team. I also have a little romance novel that I'm going to read in solidarity for my other teammates. Wisp of Gold by Leah Lindemann is about a girl named Rose Wood. She has just completed finishing school where her father had basically deserted her when he got taken in by gold fever. So once she finishes school, she journeys back to where her father has set up where he was supposed to be living. Once she gets there, all that she finds is a rotting stench where her father's corpse has been left for her to find. So rumor has it that he was killed for his treasure as she starts searching for this hidden gold vein that rumor has it that her dad finds or found. She's getting blackmailed and threats. The lines between friends and foe become blurred. So it sounds a bit like it's going to be a mystery as well. I cannot wait to give this one a shot. Okay, so that will take care of all the books that I am planning to read for the Indie Accords Readathon. I have a few others I will be getting to as well. The first one is The Only Good Indians. If you've been paying attention, I read this book back in January. I loved it. I fell in love with Stephen Graham Jones. I have been reading tons of his books ever since. This is actually a read along that is going to be taking place on the Nerdy Narrative Discord. So if you haven't read this book and you want to read it with us, come join us. The link is in the description box down below. I'm interested to see what I'm going to think and feel about it on the second go around. I will also be continuing my journey down the path to the Dark Tower with Song of Susanna by Stephen King. This is the sixth book. It's a really skinny book. I was so shocked at how skinny this one was when it came in the mail. I'm not used to that from Stephen King, especially with this series. The series have all been really huge chunkers. So I'm very excited to get into this one. We have left off with quite a cliffhanger in Wolves of the Kala. So I am very excited to start this one and see what happens next. Patron pick of the month is A Plague of Giants by Kevin Hearn. I am super excited to read this one. There are two books out in the series so far. I found out Kevin Hearn is busy working on the third one. I believe it is due to be out next year. So this is great timing to get the first two books read this year. So I'll be ready when the next one comes out. But this one sounded amazing. I love the cover. I've been wanting to read him anyway. I do have his Iron Druid Chronicles over here to read. So this will be a great introduction to his work for me. If I get all of those taken care of, I will go straight into The Grey Bastards by Jonathan French. This is a series that was recommended to me by one of my patrons, Ev. She loves this series. It's about half human, half orc people. That's all I needed to know. But the third book comes out in September. So I'm hitting this one in July, the second one in August, and I'll be ready for the third one when it comes out, I believe September 19th. 
It comes out on Ev's birthday. I remember that much. And then I will be reading A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gavril K. If I don't have time for it in July, I will definitely read it in August. This one I have been curious about ever since I had an April Fool's prank played on me concerning this book. So my friend Steve played a joke on me and it was so funny. But basically what he did is he pretended he was writing a book and he was sending me a chapter a day. And what happened was on April Fool's he revealed he was plagiarizing this book because he wanted me to read it. He wanted me to read Guy Gavril K and I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But it worked because what he sent me, I was all in. I was like emailing, when am I getting more? What about what happens next? What about this? So I can't wait to read this book. Guys, that's it. That is my huge TBR for July. It, it looks crazy. I know it looks crazy, but a lot of them are novellas. I'll read them in a day. Some I also have available through Libby and Audible, so I'll be able to listen that way. It looks worse than it is, maybe. I don't know. I always have crazy TBRs. Y'all know me. Uh, but did you see anything here that you've read or you're interested in? There's a lot of indie involved on this TBR this month. I hope as I talk about them on my weekly wrap-ups, you hear something that makes you interested enough to give some of these indie and self-pub authors a shot. That's my goal. I want to expose you guys to some of these awesome writers that you may not hear about because they're not mainstream that just don't have the funds to market like the big five do. Hit me up in the comments down below and tell me which of these you're more interested to hear about. Uh, I know a lot of them are horror based, but that's because I'm team captain of the horror thriller mystery team. So I did go with that being the majority of what I'm going to read, but I'd love to hear what you think about some of these titles. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. While you're in the comments, are you participating in the Indie Readathon? What team are you on? Let me know. I'd love to hear. You know, I really appreciate you watching and supporting the channel. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you have a great reading month lined up ahead in July. If you've already picked your TBR, let me know what you're reading. I hope your morning has gotten off to a great start. I hope the rest of your day is absolutely fantastic. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.